Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitU channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I've got your attention. I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Have you ever wondered why, no matter who is elected as your federal representative, not anything ever changes? Why nothing ever gets better? Why it matters not one whit if your representative has a D or an R behind their name? Well, it's because all federal officials, congressmen, senators, presidents, and judges, whether they be Republicans or Democrats, are power-mad, sociopathic narcissists in the textbook sense. In fact, I invite you to look up antisocial personality disorder, which is the same as sociopathy, and a narcissistic personality disorder, and I've provided links to both of those in my description box, and examine the list of symptoms. You'll easily see that they apply to all politicians, even your favorite. There are no exceptions. All federal officials, congressmen, senators, presidents, and judges, including your favorite, are power-mad sociopathic narcissists. The problem is that the federal government is now so powerful that it only attracts the corrupt and the corruptible. Lord Acton, a British nobleman of the 19th and 20th centuries, once famously remarked, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. No truer statement has ever been spoken. The U.S. federal government's power today is now far greater than anything Acton could possibly have imagined. With the modern 24-hour surveillance state, the federal government's power is all but absolute. No one ever runs for federal office who doesn't want that kind of power. Even if they don't want it in the few cases that happens, they become corrupt in less than 18 months. Now, I watched this in action in 1994. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich proposed a contract with America, and you can see it. I've got a link to that in my description box as well. Gingrich promised that if the American public voted a Republican majority into Congress, he would bring the items mentioned in that contract to a vote before the House. Well, the American people voted Republican, and a, just a whole bunch of new, fresh-faced congresspersons and senators took office with high hopes and dreams. It took a little under 18 months for them to become completely and absolutely corrupt. While much of the contract with America was voted on, nothing meaningful ever came of it. Some of those fresh-faced people from 1994 are still there. They are now grizzled, old, and corrupt. Nothing got fixed. In fact, Things only ever got worse as they consistently consolidated, consolidated their power and unconstitutionally voted themselves more and more control over our lives. It is impossible for even the most pure of heart to remain so, because just think about this. The moment that you're sworn in, you're surrounded by an army of yes-men and hangers-on. None of them are your friends, although they all desperately pretend to be. You're beset by lobbyists and campaign donors all begging you to take their cash. You have the power to get anything that you might desire. Drugs, liquor, women, men sometimes too, money. You can even get underaged men and women. Whatever desire you may ever have had is now yours for the taking. Imagine the most depraved thing to ever cross your mind, and that's, you know, let's be honest with ourselves, because everyone has something that we don't like to even admit to ourselves. But as a federal official, you have the power to do ex anything that you like. There is absolutely nothing to stop you from indulging in any activity or vice. And not only that, literally everyone around you is begging you to do it. Oh, sure, they'll want a little favor here and there from time to time, but really, is that so bad considering that you now have the power to do anything? Now, it's easy to be an armchair quarterback and say, no, no, I'm different. I'd never succumb. But in reality, it's just not that simple. I've worked a couple of very large, big rock bands. I have seen teenage girls throwing themselves, not just at the bands, but at the roadies, 
they actively want to be the band's sex toy for a couple of hours. That's happening constantly at the federal level. Every single time, I mean, every day, a woman like Marilyn Monroe is throwing herself at you, begging for the chance to become your mistress. If women aren't fighting each other for your favor, lobbyists and donors are also throwing them at you. It is ongoing, and it will never stop until you've left office. If you're a president, it never stops. There are now, in fact, some studies showing that power itself acts as the same way as an addictive narcotic. The more you get, the more you want, and giving it up becomes all but impossible. For example, why did Hillary not have the decency to give an election night concession speech? Every other losing presidential candidate of my lifetime has managed to do this. So why was Hillary different? Well, according to a lot of stories from insiders, she went on a tearing rage, destroying everything in sight. Why? Because her political career was over and the ultimate power that she thought she'd have slipped right through her fingers and it would never come back. She went into, and I assume she's probably still suffering from, a classic drug withdrawal. At this stage of the game, you just don't get to be honest in Washington, even if that's what you want to be. Power madness consumes you. It takes less than 18 months. Now, the highest functioning among them are capable of looking normal for the small amount of time that the public sees them, which is usually a talking head on TV. The rest of the time, who knows what they're doing? Only they, their mistresses, some lobbyists and donors, they're not about to spill the beans. The only solution to this is to reduce the federal government back to its constitutional limits. When federal representatives have little power to begin with, there's not much temptation. However, reducing government's power would require those currently in office to willingly reduce their own power. Why in the world would they ever agree to that? Power is all they live for. Inside each of them is an Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars screaming, UNLIMITED POWER! Now, historically, government power is reduced in one of three ways. Being conquered, a revolt, or collapse. And we are presently on track for the latter two. Now, collapse will occur when it finally sinks in to the entire world that the U.S. public debt will never be repaid. The current public debt is somewhere between more money than exists in the United States and more money than exists in the entire world. And nobody really knows what the true figure is. Anytime you hear the couple of dozen trillion uh, dollar figure being bandied about, that's the low end estimate. The high end estimate is over $100 trillion, which is far more money than exists in the entire world. It long ago became mathematically impossible to pay the public debt. We went off the cliff during the Reagan administration. No country in the entire history of recorded civilization has ever indebted itself the way that the United States has done. Any that have come even fractionally close have all experienced a currency collapse followed by a governmental collapse. And there's absolutely no reason to believe that the United States is any different. But more pressing than the, pub the public debt collapse is revolt. The left is already bat guano insane over President Trump. They have completely lost the capacity for rational thought. And if I've said in other videos, when he wins in 2020, which is a certainty at this point, there is every reason to believe that the left will start a civil war. Such a civil war would also trigger the financial collapse. Civil war in the United States would destroy the world's faith in the U.S.'s ability to repay its already unpayable debt. Revolt and collapse would almost certainly destroy food and drug supply chains. Cities will starve by the tens of millions. Now, I'll be dead, personally, within four days without one of my medications. Without another one, it could kill me in only two days because there's a withdrawal thing that messes with your body really bad. None of this is going to change because power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts 
absolutely. Even if you go into federal office with the best of intentions, you will become absolutely corrupt in under 18 months. And that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and uh, nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, the BitChu channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.